will be my last video for a while. Um, on my first video, um, in my first video, I talked about Elizabeth Swan a little bit, and on the comments, some people said that she was a Mary Sue. I don't think she's a Mary Sue, and I will explain why I don't think that. Uh, for one, Elizabeth is not a stand-in for the audience or the writers of the story, even though many fangirls wish to be her because she gets to kiss both Orlando Bloom and Johnny Depp. Uh, she has her own distinguished personality. She is, however, the access character for the audience, as explained in the first commentary of, uh, of the first movie that Ted, Elliot, and Terry Rosio give. Uh, she is the normal human who enters the this crazy world of cursed pirates and all that. Uh, there are other other examples of access characters is Liz from Roswell and Kagame from Nasha, normal humans who enter fantastic situations. She isn't an avatar for the writers either, not any more than Will, Jack, Barbosa, Norrington, or any of the other characters anyway. Uh, there's um, the writers in all of the characters, not just Elizabeth. Um, not all of her actions are admirable and you're not supposed to think they are. This allows the audience to make their own judgments about her versus having us just think, oh, she's the bestest person ever. Like, we're supposed to sympathize with Bella and agree with all of her judgments and think she's a good person when she's not. Uh, her name does have a special meaning, or her last name does, anyway. Elizabeth was probably chosen simply because it's a common English name like William, Will Turner, or James, James Norrington. Swan is, however, a symbol of feminine beauty and grace, but Jack Sparrow's name also seems to have a special meaning. In, a, I read, um... Uh, in Shakespearean times, uh, to jack something means to steal it, and obviously a sparrow is a type of bird, and birds have long been a symbol for freedom. It's obvious symbolism. Elizabeth isn't more unique than any of the other characters. I'd say Jack is probably the one who is the most unique. She isn't held up to be the most specialist person ever. She is a good fighter, but it's never said she's better than Will with a sword, or that she has any extra talents that any of the other characters also you know, possess. Uh, the only reason she, also the only reason she becomes Pirate King was because Jack voted for her because he knew that she would do what he wanted, which was not raise Calypso, even though Barbosa did it anyway. That wasn't Elizabeth's fault. One thing, uh, that, uh, makes her admittedly suish, though, is the fact that four men desire her in the course of the story. However, only one of the men seem to be attracted to her without any great reason, and even then it's done so to move the plot along. In Norrington's case, he desires her because of, uh, he, she's the type of girl he's supposed to marry. Like, she's the governor's daughter. He, you know, just became, um, Commodore. He, um, you know, is now in this high position, and Elizabeth is the type of girl that he supposed to marry. Plus, he, you know, knew her since she was small. So it makes sense that he would want to marry her. Will wants to marry her because he loves her, and I could go on and on about that. I love Will and Elizabeth, but I think that's a different video for a different time. Jack, why Jack desires her. I think the main reason why is uh, because my guess is you can count the people who have tricked Jack on one hand. And when she, in the first movie, when she tricked him and got him drunk and lit that huge signal fire, he was intrigued by her because he felt like he met an equal. That's my guess. So to me, it makes sense that Jack Sparrow would desire Elizabeth. Uh, Sal Fang. He seems to just like her because she's hot, and Keira Knightley is admittedly a beautiful woman. However, she, because of this, she gets on, um, the, his ship, 
And then uh, when he dies, she's able to take his position as Pirate Lord. And then also because of the uh, situation, she's able to meet up with Will, uh, with uh, Bill Turner and see what he's in. And then she's able to understand uh, Will's choice. And also she meets up then with Norrington. So like from plot standpoint, it, it made things come together. Um, there are no characters that love her despite how poor, poorly she treats them. She, uh, she pays for all the mistakes she makes. Like, uh, when Will sees her kiss Jack, you know, they don't talk to each other for months. And, you know, and she feels, you know, incredibly guilty for sending Jack to, uh, you know, the locker. And he doesn't seem to really forgive her. Well, you know, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. That's kind of... It's left ambiguous. And um, on top of that, she had to wait ten years tell Will, for Will, before uh, he could return and be with her and their son. She doesn't get her happy ending served, served to her on a silver platter. She also has uh, some notable flaws, and uh, they get her in trouble from time to time. And she has to work, like any other person in the world, to overcome her flaws and make a better life for herself. The one talent she seems to possess is um, sword fighting. And Will taught her how to sword fight. It's said in the second movie, the knowledge didn't just fall out of the sky into her head and bam. Excuse me. Um... And plus, it's said in the commentary of the first movie that Elizabeth is uh, the best, or that, excuse me, Will is better than Barbosa and Jack at sword fighting. So it would make sense that if, you know, Will taught Elizabeth how to fight, that she also would be very deaf because he'd, you know, be a good teacher. Um, I know... I don't know why people call her Mary Sue, um, when in my opinion Jack has just as many Sueish qualities as she does, if not more. He was able to blast himself off a ship with cannon and land completely safe onto another one. Um, if I was an angry feminist, I would probably accuse people of being sexist. That Elizabeth, this awesome symbol of women's strength and independence, is labeled a Mary Sue. Okay, I guess that's it. Um, yeah. Also, um, I might be a bit biased because Elizabeth um, was, is my favorite character of the Pirate series. And I think, you know, Ted and Terry are very, they're great at writing women. And uh, they, you know, made Elizabeth as powerful, as smart as quick as any of the other male characters, and I think that that was supposed to be a part of her character, that, you know, she was, like, their symbol, their, for, their feminist symbol. It's pretty clear to me that they're feminists also from their other work, even though I don't think they've ever come out and said, yeah, we're feminists. Okay. Um, all right. Bish, uh, Bish Bater and Afi Rizane.